Children with ADHD are often seen as behavioural problems. Uh, I would argue that actually it's not so much behaviour that is the difficulty, it's the, uh, it's the learning process of what they need to do that they have difficulties with. Children with ADHD often know what to do. It's just that they're unable always to do it. Having said this, much frustration can occur for children with ADHD who keep on failing both at school and to a certain extent at home. Frustrations can take place, self-esteem can drop, and many of these children can offer us a great deal of challenges in terms of behavior. Predominantly though, children with ADHD can be successfully managed and taught both at home and school by adopting three major principles. The first thing is that these children really need structure. Yes, they may fight against structure, but predominantly they really need structure. Structure needs consistency. It means rules, some of which are non-negotiable, some of which will sometimes mean that children will not agree with you, but fundamentally it's a tough love approach that these children really respond to. Having said that, flex flexibility needs to complement structure because for some of these children we will need to adapt some of the things that we may expect of all children at certain times in certain places to help these children actually get through the consistency and structure that we're trying to do. People say structure and flexibility are contradictory. I would counter that and say that structure and flexibility are complementary. There, there should be three or four key rules, both at school and at home, that all children with ADHD or not should have to conform to. I would also say that children with ADHD, like all other children, are responsible for their behaviour. They own their own actions. If a child with ADHD hits another child, it wasn't the ADHD that hit the child. They did. They need to be said to be made responsible for those actions. Having said that, what we want to try and do is prevent those situations from occurring by making sure we always give the child with ADHD a choice of their actions so that we do not put them into situations where they take those wrong options. Flexibility is a really big word and it can mean different things to different people. But when it comes to children with ADHD, the sort of things we're looking to do to be flexible on would be some of those things that many of us take for granted that are very easy to do. Some of these things will be to do with timekeeping. Children with ADHD do not have a very good concept of time. Five minutes to them can seem like 50 minutes. So we really need to be helping them and not penalizing them on issues such as timekeeping. In a school situation, I would not accept children getting to class late, but what I might do is I might make sure that another child will be allocated as a mentor to help a child with ADHD to get to class on time. This is what we mean by flexibility. In the home situation, it can be very difficult for parents with children to get them to, to go to bed on time, to sit down and have dinner with the rest of the family, and there are a host of other issues that all will need to be, to a certain extent, pre-planned in order to get a successful result. Flexibility at home can be very difficult for parents sometimes to do with all the strains and stresses of their own lives and with that of other siblings too. But again, the same rule of thumb should take place. There should be some things in the home environment that are non-negotiable and other things that students and parents and families and children will all need to try and work out in advance so successful outcomes can take place. We have already discussed that children with ADHD have difficulties in three main areas education, behaviour and socially. We've also talked about that structure and flexibility are two of the key principles to help children with ADHD negotiate some of these areas. The third key area though is relationships and this particularly is going to be 
important when it comes to the difficulties that children with ADHD face in socialization. Children with ADHD do not always have problems with forming peer relationships, but often they do. They appear sometimes to butt in, they appear sometimes to provoke other children to responses that these children will be unable to resist. Children with ADHD are often said to be bullied. Having said this, it is true, but often they are provocative victims. They can be annoying, they can be irritating. Peers in school need to have some degree of information in advance, in my opinion, about why children are different. Some of the most successful programs in schools I've seen have been assemblies talking about special needs and talking about how it affects different individuals and how it makes them different. Children with ADHD can form successful friendships. But it needs to both parties to understand both parties' point of view. Children with ADHD do need to have help in understanding things like taking their turn. They need to understand that certain children will not enjoy them butting in all the time. This is particularly difficult not just at school but at home for siblings who may find parents seemingly giving children with ADHD more time than they. There is a term out there which is, I feel, quite important for both teachers, parents and all those working with children with ADHD and peers to try and take on board, which is that fairness is not giving everyone the same, it's giving them what they need. Some children will need more time than others at certain periods of their life to try and deal with the issues of childhood, both educational, behavioural and socially, in order to negotiate this period. Having said this, siblings in particular, in families of children with ADHD, should also receive parent attention and be made sure that they get some one-to-one -one time, that they get some understanding of their needs as well, too often, I think, a child with ADHD can dominate parent time. My advice is that parents should always receive some type of respite from other members of their family so they can spend some quality time, not just with a child with ADHD, but with other siblings that the child may have in the house. There are a host of practical suggestions that teachers can adopt when successfully teaching and managing children with ADHD. Many books are written, I've written some myself, and there are many others also on the marketplace that will talk about many of the options that are available. Predominantly though, children with ADHD need to be stimulated within the school environment. It does mean sometimes special considerations about time doing certain tasks. Many, many schools and many teachers are successfully teaching children with ADHD by breaking these down into small chunks. This is the way that these children learn best. Seating arrangements will have to be experimented in order to work out which part of the room is going to be less distracting for this child and for the other children in the room. Options including creating workstations where children can work individually from time to time will always be very, very welcome. In a nutshell, however, children with ADHD need to have two main approaches to teach them successfully. Number one is that we need to reduce the distractions as much as we can to allow them to focus. And number two is that, in, to a certain extent, the distractions need to be increased in order to stimulate them to learn in an effective way. One other area that really does need looking at is organisational skills. Children with ADHD predominantly will lose things, will find pens hard to find. As opposed to penalising them for this, as particularly at secondary school, my advice is that teachers should always be looking at not just what to teach students, but how to teach them. And that essentially means helping them with their study skills, whether they're five or whether they're 15. The key in a school environment is to try and structure the unstructured time as much as possible.
This does not mean that children with ADHD should not be allowed to go out and play with their friends or play football on the field. But just to be proactive, if this time is problematic, then look at structuring it to a greater extent. It may mean that some children may stay in and attend clubs at this time. It may mean that peer mentors are assigned to help children make better choices. It may mean that supervision during these times may need to be increased.